This week is our final week of the Similar But Different series. So we're just kind of going to wrap up um, what we've been talking about, about how, um, how our Christian faith is unique, how sometimes our faith might look similar to other religious traditions, um, even some stories in the Bible might look similar to some other stories from other religious traditions about how um, really Christ is what makes our um, religion unique and how, how can we own those differences and um, how those differences are what make the Christian life so fulfilling and rewarding. Um, so yeah, this week is just kind of a wrap up of all of that. So have you ever heard of the term political correctness? Um, if you haven't, Google defines it as the avoidance, often considered as taking to extremes, of forms of expression or action that are perceived to exclude, marginalize, or insult groups of people who are socially disadvantaged or discriminated against. And there's nothing wrong um, with that definition or nothing wrong with, um, innately wrong with being politically correct. Um, it's important to respect others' beliefs. It's important to dignify um, all humans. Um, but we live in a very divided cultural context and a ve very um, divisive climate. And a lot of times we value being polite over being honest with one another. Um, and it seems like there's no place at all for disagreement or discussion when it comes to important things that we just have to uh, just kind of sit with it and be like, yeah, like you believe what you believe and I'll believe what I believe and we just have become very passive. Um, and so in today's religious pluralism, inclusivism, and political correctness, um, we've almost changed what Jesus said in John 14 verse 6 from I am the way, the truth, and the life, to I am a way, a truth, and a life. Um, so what do we do with that? Uh, how do we cling to our uniqueness and still live as missionaries of Christ? How do we affirm others and dignify them, but still share about Christ and the truth that we cling to? Um, and it can be hard to stand firm in our faith with everything pressing down around us. For Christians, following Christ is not just a set of rules, but a way of life. And not only this, but salvation can only be found in him. So Acts 4 verse 12 says, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. So what do we do with that? Um, do we just keep it locked and hidden away as like, this is, I know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, but I'm not going to um, push back when my friends maybe say something that I disagree with because I don't want to offend them? Or um, do we just kind of throw Jesus into every conversation we have and kind of just like shove it down people's throats? Um, because, you know, we're called to evangelize. Um, and the answer to both of those questions is no. Um, we're called to live by faith, not to use it as a means to disrespect others. And there are times that we should share more about our faith, but if we fail to respect others' uniqueness, um, how are they, how, if we fail, if we fail to respect others' uniqueness, how will we ever open the door for them to, to listen to us? And um, the important distinction to recognize is that the claim of Christ is exclusive, but the invitation is inclusive. So what that means is that Christ is the way to salvation, the only way to salvation. Um, so that's an exclusive claim that um, he is the truth, the way, the life. Um, but the invitation is inclusive, meaning that all are welcome to the table. All are welcome um, in, in Christ's kingdom. So a few um, viable verses that talk about this exclusive claim but inclusive invitation are Acts 13 verse 47, which says, For this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. 
And Ephesians 2, verse 4 through 10 says, But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God as a result of his works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God pre prepared beforehand so that we could walk in them. And finally, Titus 2 verse 11, which says, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. Um, and so in that, you can see the different examples of grace for all people, but only through Christ. Um, so, I'm going to kind of close with a story from my own life of when um, I kind of realized um, the uniqueness of Christ, or began to realize, I should say, and what that has like come to mean to me now. So, when I was a kid, um, I was pretty interested in theology and my dad was a pastor so um, I would often see him see him reading a book or something and think like oh like I wonder what he's reading about so I would ask him and so um, I feel like for a first grader I had a pretty good theological grasp at least potentially more than other first graders um, we talked about why denominations were different what different views on baptism, like um, I could tell you the five points of tulip, um, all of those things as a first grader. And I also went to a public school where um, I don't think I had a single friend that went to church regularly, and if, if they did go to a religious service, it wasn't um, like a Christian service. So they either had a different religious background or they just didn't go to church. And so I remember one day at recess, like, essentially sharing the gospel because um, I was probably more on the, like, shoving it down people's throats side than the, like, hide it under a bushel. Um, and that night, um, and after, well, at recess, some of my friends had shared their, their differing beliefs and how they essentially thought I was wrong. And I was like shocked by that. I was like, wait, so I think I know I'm right. And they think they know they're right. And some of the things that they think about their God is kind of like what I think, but so is everybody just right about what they think? And so I went home and that night as my dad was putting me to bed, I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask my dad tonight. And so I did, and I said, Dad, like, what, why should, why should I believe what I believe, essentially? And he, like, thought for a little bit, and then he said, Jory, I think it's all about grace and humility. And so, um, at the time, I was like, yeah, like, grace and humility. And then, um, but I think I didn't fully, like, grasp or really think too deeply about that because I was in sixth grade, but I was um, pleased with that answer, content with that answer, and kind of just went about the rest of my life. Um, but that's something that I've like come back to and actually have thought about more during this series. Um, and honestly, like we've talked about how um, different religious traditions have similarities. So Christ uh, oh. Okay, so a lot of times we emphasize um, God's power and God's glory, and God is all-powerful, and God is all-knowing, and that is a great thing to love about God. Um, but I think that we miss half of the picture when we only are like, all glory to God, which all glory should be to God. But also, God humiliated himself in Christ and became one of his creation. Like, all-powerful, all-knowing God could have just been like, well, shoot, like, this didn't work out great. I guess I'll just, like, start over. But, like, 
God chose to hum humiliate himself by becoming human so that he could redeem us. Like, that's insane. And that is not a part of any other religious tradition. And so um, I think that as I've gotten older and started to realize that more um, and gone back to that answer of humility and grace, humility and grace, that is really um, shaped the way that I, I discuss my religion and what I believe with other people that maybe believe something different um, and just change the way that I think about myself and my own faith. So in, in many ways, Christians hold similarities to people of other faiths, cultures, and traditions. And we could say, oh, like, that's just chance, you know, coincidence. Um, but I think it's the work of the Holy Spirit that God um, moves among us all. Um, and we're able to see him at work in many ways. Some of them are pretty subtle and some of them um, not as much. But we're all God's creation, created in his image as humankind. And though we are unique because of what Christ has done for us and we should live as such, we need to understand the significance of those around us as well. Um, only through mutual respect and care can we get to a point of truly sharing the good news of the gospel to those around us. So will you pray with me? Dear God, we thank you for um, creating us and for your humility and grace, God. And we pray um, that you would empower us to um, have discussions with others when, when you call us to, um, and that you would um, also help us to dignify and respect all humans um, in the way you've called us to. In Jesus' name, amen. And here's some small group questions.